I am, we are surrounded by tremendous bravery and courage. The survivors of Indian residential schools, those who risk and even sacrifice their freedom to bring more justice and equality to the world. We are, of course, seeing right now around the world in places like Ukraine, those who risk their very lives to uphold the values and well-being that must be protected. I think of the constructive resilience of First Nations women and the integra integral role that they play in their communities as we transition during this period of governance reform and Indigenous nation rebuilding to address the legacy of colonialism. They are the forces of change in our Indigenous communities. Having to speak out about the rule of law and governments not adhering to principles as they should, this was not a choice. And again, I am surmising, and you can correct me if I'm wrong later, but I imagine within your own life, in your business or organizations, there have been times where you have been confronted by others acting badly not upholding fundamental principles or rules, and you have had to make choices about what to do, to speak out, to lead, to push for change subtly or directly, to be an example of change, to ensure there is coherence and consistency between the values you were raised with, taught and hold dear, and the values of how people act and treat one another within your organization, business, or community. Women face this challenge all the time, to push back on hypocrisy and contradictions that are part of the status quo and ensure basic values and principles of respect, care, and inclusion are upheld. So, that's a bit of my story about leadership and where it took me. And I started speaking about how my upbringing and the mentors I had who prepared me on that path. But I have to say, it is also those people, or it's also the case that it's the people along the way. Those around you in those truly hard moments that are so essential. Now she, I've said this before, she would not like me um, calling her this, but in those hard days during the SNC-Lavalin matter, her name was Jane Philpott. And given the public pressure of what I experienced, it was everyday Canadians stopping me on the street, writing me, sharing of their experiences of speaking truth to power, who taught me over and over again that I was not alone that all of us, in our own way, have times in life where we have had to lead in ways that we did not expect. All of these mentors, all of this support made sure that I stayed on my path and true to who I am, who helped me to make sure that I passed my litmus test each day during those hard times and to this day. So my litmus test was and is very simple. When I look at myself in the mirror, can I still see myself, who I am, who I was raised to be, and when the image, or if the image was getting it all blurry, I knew that I was not on my right path or making the right choices. I focused on keeping the image crystal clear and crisp. And doing this meant making the choices that I did. I know doing this, being a leader and agent of change in traditionally male-dominated environments, as you all are, takes sacrifice, endurance, and relentlessness. I know your experiences, the higher standard one is held to, the double standards, how easy it is to be labeled in racialized and gendered terms, that when a woman pushes back, stands up for principles, relies on lived experience, or brings forward actual knowledge and experience, they are easily and reflexively labeled as difficult. Well, if doing all of those things means being difficult, I am simply proud to be difficult every single day of my life.